Now the next method is called the substitution method. It's pretty similar, but the only difference is that you don't have to make both of them y the subject. So if one of them, you only need to make one as y the subject, or x as a subject, that's fine too. So see how here, y in this first equation, y is the subject, y equals to ax plus b. But in the second equation, y is not the subject, it's just in a usual general form. It doesn't have to be a general form, it just has to be any equation. So see how it's like that? Then the only reason why I'm using substitution method is when it's annoying to make y the subject for this equation. Because when you want to make y the, equa y the subject, you'll have to move cx plus e over to the other side and then divide by d, it gets really annoying. So instead of changing that into an equation form, what I'm going to do is simply substitute this because see how that is y? I'm going to substitute that into y. Okay, so I get cx plus d times ax plus b by using our brackets plus e equals to zero. Okay, that's the substitu substitution method. So he, now I don't have any more y's, I just have x. So I can just expand and simplify it to solve for x. And then again, just go and substitute it back to find y. That's called the substitution method. Does that kind of make sense, guys? So as long as you have one as y the subject, just sub it into the next one. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I'll show you how to do it by looking at the next question. Have a look. Question seven, okay. See how here? y is the subject, y equals to x plus 1. Here, it's not y the subject, it's x plus y equals to 3. Now guys, if you like, you can make y the subject here. You can just move the x over and make it equation form and just use the equation method. But if you like, you can use the substitution method as well. Both methods would be actually be pretty easy in this case. But I'm just going to go for the substitution method. Because this is y, I'm just going to put that straight into the position of y in the second equation. So it's going to be x plus, so see how I pu I'm putting the first equation into the second equation? Like this. So x plus, x plus 1 equals to 3. Now always I want you to try to utilize your brackets just so you can do a bit of differentiation. Okay, so just use brackets all the time just in case. Now see how? x plus x is 2x, and I'm just going to move the 1 over to the other side so it's minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. Divide both sides by 2 and get x equals to 1. Okay, so see, after I've used the substitution method, we're just left with x. All I need to do is expand and simplify. I found x. Let's find y now. I'd probably just sub it into the first equation because y is already the subject. So substitute x equals to 1 that we've just found into the first equation. So I put 1 to there. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So therefore, x is 1, y is 2. Okay, the rest is just simple as usual as what we did in the equation method. Get the idea, guys? That is called the substitution method. So let's try another one. Question 8. Okay, see equation 1 is x plus y equals to 6. And equation 2 is y equals to x plus 2. See how in equation 2, y is the subject. So I'm going to substitute this into the first equation, where in the position of y. So put x equals to 2 into here, into the first equation, like this. So x plus x plus 2 equals to 6. So now we don't have any more y's. Now gather your like terms. x plus x is 2x. Move the 2 over to the other side and make it minus 2. 6 minus 2 is 4. Divide by 2 and get 2. So we've got x equals to 2. I'm going to substitute that. This time I'm going to put it into equation 2 because y is a subject. So put it into equation 2. So I'm going to put x equals to 2 into here. So I have 2 plus 2, which is 4. So therefore, x is 2 and y is 4. That is the answer. Okay, so it's very simple, isn't it? The substitution method is easy. All right, so let's try another one. Now, guys, if you can, please just do it by yourself. Have a go, okay? Now, have a look here. This time, we've got this equation, and we've got this equation. And you can see in the second equation, this time x is a subject. x is a subject for us. So I'm going to substitute this into the position of x in the first equation. So see how that's where x is? I'm going to put it into there. So I'm going to put 
y, uh, sorry, x equals to 3y plus 13 into the first equation that, that, in that circled part, the x. So use brackets, guys. It's going to be 3 times 3y plus 13 because I put that into that position. So use brackets and then plus the y equals to 19, the rest as it is. So see how now we no longer have x, we just have y. All you need to do now is expand it out and simplify it. So expand out the brackets. So we have 3 times 3y as 9y, and 3 times 13 is 39, plus y equals to 19. Be careful with your expansion as well. Now gather your like terms. 9y plus y is over on the left, and 39, I'm going to move it over to the other side and make it negative 39. This is 10y, 19 minus 39 is negative 20, isn't it? Now divide both sides by 10 because I just want y. So negative 20 divided by 10 is negative 2. So this time we found y first. So now all you need to do is substitute it into any of these two equations and find the other pronumeral x. This time I'm going to sub it into equation 2 because x is already the subject for us. So sub it into equation 2, so put negative 2 into here, okay? So I have 3 times negative 2 plus 13. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 plus 13 is 7. That is the answer. So y equals 2, negative 2, and x equals to 7. That is our final answer. Okay, always make a conclusion. That's always the best way for teachers to mark. Okay, so again, you don't have to make y the subject, you can make x a subject, like this case. Question 10. Okay, so this time, both of them are not in equation form. Nothing, nothing is a subject for us. Because see how equation 1 is just x plus 2y is 4, and this one, 2x minus y is 3, so nothing is really the subject. So what I'm going to do is try to manipulate one of these two equations to make either x or y the subject. So, I'm going to put, see here, um, I change this to something like this. Can you see how I change that? I simply move the 2y over to the right hand side and made it negative 2y plus 4. So x is a subject. Can you see that? So because now x is a subject, I'm going to sub it into the second equation where this is x. So I'm going to put this. See how that is x? I'm going to put that into the position of x in the second equation, like this. So 2 times, using brackets, negative 2y plus 4, minus y equals to 3. So now I'm just left with the y's. Expand it out, so 2 times negative 2y is negative 4y, 2 times 4 is 8, minus y equals to 3. So you get rid of your brackets. Now move your all your like terms together. So we have negative 4 minus y on my left, and 3 minus 8 on my right. Negative 4y minus y is negative 5y. 3 minus 8 is negative 5. Now divide both sides by negative 5. So negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1. So we found y. Now I'm going to substitute this into, what do you think? Where should I sub it into? Let's get rid of all these. Where should I sub it? Which equation will get me the quickest way to find the other pronumeral x? See how in equation 1 that I've changed? See this one? x is a subject. So I'm going to substitute that into that equation. So 1 into y. So I have negative 2 times 1 plus 4, which is negative 2 plus 4, which is just 2. So x is 2, y is 1. That is it. Okay, so if, it's not, if nothing is a subject, make it the subject and then just use the substitution method. That's the idea in this question. Okay, question 11. This time's going to be a little bit different because have a look at these two equations, guys. Now you can see both of them, nothing is a subject, so we'll have to change one of them. But I'm not going to change it fully. So I'm not going to make y the subject or x a subject fully. Because if I do that, have a look at this equation. If I make, trying to make x a subject, I'll have to move over the y and then divide by 4. And then same with this one, it's going to be a bit of work to do substitution. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. Watch this. I'm going to, in this equation, make 2x a subject. So I need to move the 5y over, don't I? So here I'm going to make 2x a subject. Sorry, that's my weird x, isn't it? Um, by moving the 5y over. So I have 23 
minus 5y. Or you could have minus 5y plus 23, it doesn't matter. But what I'm doing is now have a look at the second equation. See how 4x is 2 times 2x, isn't it? Can you see that? So what I'm going to do now is put 2x equals to negative 5y plus 23. So I'll just change this as well. Well, they've put y first, so I'll just do that as well. So I'm moving this over, so I have negative 5y plus 23. So I'm putting, see how this is 2x? I'm going to put that into my second equation because I know that 4x is 2 times 2x, as I said here, isn't it? So 2x, this is 2x. I can put this into there. Can you see that? I'm trying to understand that part if you don't get it yet. I'm trying to understand what I'm just saying. 4x is 2 times 2x. See how 2x is negative 5y plus 23? That's what I'm going to put into 2x. Okay? So, I'll just rub this out just so it's not too messy. I can go like that. So, because 4x is 2 times 2x, see here, 2x, I'm going to put this into my 2x. So I have 2 times 2x minus, as I said, just change it like that. So I go like this. 2x is negative 5y plus 23. That's what I'm going to put into the 2x position. Okay, so now I'm just left with the y's. So this is a little trick you can use. You don't have to fully make x a subject. So now expand and simplify. So I have negative 10y plus 46 because I'm expanding everything with the 2 minus 3y equals to 7. Gather your like terms. So I'm moving the 46 over to the right by making it negative 46. And we have negative 10y minus 3y on my left. Negative 10y minus 3y is negative 13y. And 7 minus 46 is negative 39. Divide both sides by negative 13 to have positive 3 because negative 39 divided by negative 13 is 3. So we found y pretty quickly, haven't we? By doing the substitution method. So all I need to do is find x. I'm going to substitute x, oh sorry, y equals to 3 that we've just found into my equation 1. Now equation 1 is the one that I've changed. I made 2x a subject, haven't I? So I'm going to put y equals to 3 into here, like this. Negative 5 times 3 plus 23, which is 8. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15, plus 23 is 8. Now I still have to find x by dividing by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4, so we found x. Make a conclusion, x equals to 4 and y equals to 3. That is my conclusion. So I know this one has a little bit more work to do, but it's a lot easier than just making x a subject fully or y the subject fully because it's going to involve a lot of fractions. So try to utilize this method if it's applicable for the question. Okay, hopefully you got what I'm saying. So that's 11. Let's do another one. Okay, so we've got equation 1 and equation 2 like that. I'm going to try to change equation 1 by making x a subject. So see, all I did was move the 2y over to my right and make it negative 2y, so x is a subject. So I'm going to substitute this because this is x into here. So I have 2 times negative 2y equals to 3y. And then 2 times negative 2y is negative 4y. And then gather your like terms, so move it all onto the left by gathering the y's together. Negative 4y minus 3y is negative 7y. Now guys, zero, y is 0, isn't it? Because if I divide 0 by negative 7, I get 0. So y is 0 this time. So I've got to substitute that into equation 1 or 2. I'll just sub it into equation 1 because I made x a subject already. So put y equals to 0 into here. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. So x and y are both 0. That is our, that is our um, values of x and y. So that is it, guys. So substitution method is quite similar to the equation method, isn't it? So hopefully this wasn't too bad as well. So that's the end of substitution method.